Hello, welcome to Data Science. This is Vivin here. And in this section, we will be learning different types of libraries that are available in Python, which are very useful while doing data science or writing code using Python. So NumPy is something that is used for numerical complexity, computing, or can be used for mathematical operations. NumPy actually stands for numerical Python. So anything that has to do with numbers. It's a core library for numeric and scientific computing. It processes multiple multi-dimensional arrays. It makes the computing and processing much easier. Now there's a lot of different libraries that we will look at in this particular section. The most three popular or common libraries that we'll look at is, in this case is NumPy, which is our numerical uh, Python. The next one is Pandas. And the one after that is Matplotlib. So these are three popular libraries that are available for Python, especially for data science. So NumPy, we'll start with some examples. In, in future sections, we will go through some real life examples of how to use them. But just for an introduction, I'm gonna go over some basics of NumPy. So let's start coding. I'm gonna go and start a new notebook, new Python 3 notebook. I'm gonna save it as, let's call it Python, NumPy and I'll start with uh, let's start with single dimensional arrays what are the single dimensional arrays now if you want to use NumPy library or any library first you have to import that library in your code so I'm going to say import NumPy and you can directly use NumPy from here onwards but a lot of uh, practices to use shorter form of it you can use n, you can give your own name for if you want, but a common practice is to use it as np, which is numpy short form or alias. And that's what we'll be using here going forward. So how does this work? So let's say if I have a list, uh, which is a bunch of numbers, I can say one, two, three, and four. So I have a list with these four numbers and I want to create a, let's say, an, an, an numpy array. The way you create it is, you say np, which is our numpy of the handler here or variable dot the function that exists is array. I want to create a single dimensional array and this is a single dimensional array. So I can directly give list one or I can even copy paste these items inside here like this. So once I give that now I have my array, let's print it out. So if you see this is a single dimensional numpy array, it's also called as one dimensional, but if you look at type of n1 it will tell you numpy n dimensional array which means it is the, the n here is one because it's only one dimensional if you want to do a multi if two dimension array the way you can do it is i can say n2 equal to np dot array and inside this i can give list one and list two or i can directly write the list inside something like this so th i create an array of multi-dimensional, this is the first dimension, say one, two, three, and four, and I can give, let's say five, six, seven, and eight. So the first dimension has one, two, three, four, the second dimension has five, six, seven, eight. If I print it out, I can say N2. So if you see it, this is the first dimension, the second dimension, it's like bar two by two, you can actually look at the shape for a particular uh, N-dimensional array by giving N2 dot shape. So it will tell you it's two by four, which means it's a two dimensional array with four elements inside it. Similarly, if I want to look at the shape of the first one, it has four items in it, but it has no dimension sync since it's a single dimension. So it has four items array. You can actually change the shape of an array. So if you look at N2 again, and if I say N2 dot shape from two comma four, I can say four comma two, up, I think I have to say equal to four comma two. Now, if I look at n two, n two. Oops, I think I changed it to not a data cell. I'm gonna get rid of this. N two. Now, if you see, it kind of took these numbers and created a four row two column array. So this is how you can change shapes. You can change it to let's say n two dot shape equal to one comma eight now if i look at n2 you'll see one single 
item with eight all the eight objects inside it so this is how you can play around with shapes of multi-dimensional array you can have as many as you want inside it and it will helpful now here i was creating an array with numbers what if i want to initialize an array and add the values inside it later but i want to initialize it as all empty or zero elements i can do that using a function called as zeros and i'll have to set the dimension let's say one comma two if i print this you'll see it created a one dimensional one particular item with two items inside it similarly i can say n4 equal to np dot zeros and inside that let's say give a big number 15 comma 15 and did do wrong okay yep i forgot the inside bracket np dot zeros 15 comma 15 up yep, forgot this and now if i look at n4 if i look at n4 i'll see a 15 by 15 and all all the current fields added all the current items are added as zero so that's how you can initialize an item with all zeros but what if you want to add a particular number inside it so let's say i create n5 np dot i can say full so that means fill my array which is of the size 2 comma 4 with all elements 10 when i run this you'll see it creates 2 by 4 matrix with all the elements with 10 so that's how you can create an array with a particular number initialized inside it i can also give a range so to give a range i can say n6 dot a range and the size let's say 10 comma 20 10 comma 20 oops sorry np and now when i look at n6 you'll see it created an array single dimensional array with 10 to the 19 because it doesn't include the last item inside it so it created from 10 if you want to include the last one and start from let's say 11 11 to 21 oops i think i want to do there you go and now you have 11 to 20 so you can give a range what if i want to give a range but with a particular interval you can always give the range and then let's say i want to give step of five let's change this number to one 200 what this does is it will create one to hundred but it will give a step of five so one plus five six six plus five eleven eleven plus five sixteen so on until 96 96 plus five is 101 which is outside 100 so it will not print that you can also start it from 0 and this way it's 0 5 95 it will not add 100 because 100 is the last number in this and it doesn't include the last number so that's how you can create a, 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 an array with a particular range with a particular step inside it next thing that i want to show is how do you create an array with random numbers so there's a function called as random and i want to fill up, fill this with random integers and those integers start from one and at 100 and five items so what i'm saying is i want random integers inside my array i want only five items it can range from one to 100 if i run this and eight there you go i have five random numbers 6 33 86 2 and 28 if i run this again i'll have different numbers because every time i run it it will create random numbers for me so this is how you can initialize an array with random numbers now once now we've seen all the functions of how to create initialize now what if i have two different arrays and i want to stack them together so let's start with again n1 equal to np dot array and add 10 20 30 inside my first array i create another array n2 np dot array inside this i'll add 
let's say 11 21 31 and now I want to stack them vertically what does that mean let's do it and see so if I say np dot v stack which means I want to stack n1 over n2 vertically how does it look like something like this so it takes two arrays and creates a multi-dimensional array two dimensional arrays in this case since I've given two and adds the first over second if you had three n1 n2 n3 it will stack all three of them one over another so you can stack multiple arrays into one single multi-dimensional array using vertical stack you can also stack them horizontally by saying np dot h stack horizontal stack and in this again n1 comma n2 add it to n4 now if i print n4 you'll see they are stacked horizontally which means next to each other 10 20 30 11 21 31 there's one more stack which is called as the if you see all of them were stacked in a row order so there is a function called as column stack and you give the array n1 comma n2 in this case what it will do is it will take first number second number stack them next to put them in an array second so column wise it will stack my arrays so if i print this out you'll see it took 10 and 11 20 and 21 30 and 31 and stack them next to each other so this is how you can stack multiple arrays together now if you remember sets from before what we did in sets is you could actually do intersection and difference and see the different uh, differences in particular sets so similarly in this you also have something called as a uh, difference and intersection so how do we do that let me create from start another array since I need a larger array for this example I'm gonna create an array 10 20 30 40 50 60 and then I'll create another one call it n2 inside this array I'm gonna add same numbers 40 50 60 70 80 and 90 so I have these two arrays n1 and n2 now I want to see what are the common elements in these two arrays I can create np dot intersect 1d that's the function n1 comma n2 and now if I run n3 you'll see it will look at the first array and second array and intersect what do intersect here so 40 and 40 50 and 50 60 and 60 they're intersecting which means they're common in both the arrays that's why it created a new array n3 and added those numbers inside it similarly I can do something called as set diff 1d what this does is it checks what is available in n1 which is not available in n2 what do I mean Run this so if you see 10 20 30 is available in n1 which is not available in n2 it doesn't care about the things that are available in n2 it takes the first element and looks what's available in n1 but not in n2 similarly you can do n5 just change the order now in this case it should be 70 80 90 because it looks at n2 and sees what is available in n1 40 50 60 remove those and give me whatever is left so if i run n5 you'll see 70 80 90 show up so that's how you can do intersection and difference among the arrays that are available another thing that you can do is you can add up all the numbers so let's create n6 and say np dot sum of n1 and n2 give me an array addition of both of them and 6 600 now how do I know this is right just go ahead and add all these numbers and you'll see 10 plus 20 plus 30 plus 40 plus 50 and it should add up to 600 so that's what this does np.sum takes a bunch of arrays and then adds all the numbers inside that and gives you some that's what sum does now what if I want to look at the axis like let's say I want to add all the numbers in a particular axis what do I mean by that let's create n7 np dot sum n1 comma n2 
and I say axis equal to zero. In this case, what it does is it will take the numbers. Let's say where is my n1 and n2? 10 plus 40, 50. 20 plus 50, 70. 30 plus 60, and it will add all that items. So it will take each and every element and add to its neighboring counterpart and that's what it creates an array so that's what axis 0 does similarly if i change it to axis 1 in this case it will go add all the numbers add it to the first element add all the elements add it to so that's my axis 2 so you can do axis 1 or axis 2 so think of it as x axis versus y axis it's quite helpful when we actually do some real implementation in future sections Next thing that I want to show is uh, basic arithmetic operations that you can do with your arrays. So let me just copy, as you can see, I have numbers 10, 40. So I can do is, I can say, let's take this here so it's visible to us. Okay, I create N8 equal to NP or N1 plus one. So this is an addition operation. What it does is it will give me an array where it will add one to each and every item here and give it back to me. Similarly, you can do subtraction. So it removes one from everyone. You can do multiplication. Now multiplication of one is, so I'll just do two. And you'll see multiply by two, 20, 20 into two is 40, 30 into two is 60. So it does multiplication. Similarly, I can do division, so two divided by five. So 10 divided by five, 2, 20 divided by 4, 5, 4, so it does division operations. So these are the basic arithmetic operations that you can do with your NumPy uh, functions. Next one is, um, there are some common functions that we use for, uh, for statistics. You probably heard of them, mean, median, and standard deviation. Mean and median are measures of center of where the actual center is but they use different algorithms for it like mean is nothing but arithmetic average where median is the center element if you put all of them together i'll kind of go over that in a minute but just it's it's an it's a center element if there's two numbers in the center then it takes the average what does it mean we'll look at it in a minute and standard deviation is a measure of spread of how it's spread there's a particular algorithm so can there's a formula for it deviation formula you just google it it will give you this formula and we'll go over it what it actually means so um, let's go back here first and let's create an array np dot array add some numbers inside it just some say 10 20 30 or i'll just use the one that we have here 10 20 30 40 50 60. once i have this array i can say mean number equal to np dot the build and function so we don't have to do the arithmetic for it i run this mean num is 35 why because the average of 10 plus 20 plus 30 40 50 60 divided by 6 equal to 35.0 if you don't trust me i'm gonna open up a calculator 10 plus 20 plus 30 plus 40 plus 50 plus 60 divided by 6 is 35 and that's the value that we get here similarly for median equal to since we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 and all of them are in order you'll probably see the center element is 30 and 40 now 30 plus 40 30 plus 40 divided by 2 is 35 so np dot median of n1 will give me 35.0 what if i had one more number at the end let's say 80 in this case it will add all the numbers for the mean it will say 41.42 because average of those numbers you can use the calculator and try it out and median will be the center element in this case since we have three elements here three elements to the right and in there in order so it will be 40. Now if I run this, it's 40. If I remove this 40 and add it to the end, if you look at it, 
it will not cause any problem there and at the same time it will not cause what it does is it takes these numbers puts them in order and then takes the medium so that's how median works the next one is standard deviation now I can quickly do a standard deviation how does it work I say NP dot standard deviation of N1 STD NUM 22.314 now how does this math actually come into picture now I'm not going to show it with this number what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to a much simpler number 1 2 3 just to show how this formula works run this run this and run this you see 0 0.81649 whatever I got here now let's say I have what number do I have I have one I have two and I have three these three numbers I have and what is it what do I need here on the top I have x1 minus mu mu is nothing but the median so in this case the median is 2 so I'm gonna say this say this is number minus mean in this case mean is 2 so which means the number that goes here is 1 minus 2 is minus 1 2 minus 2 is 0 3 minus 2 is 1 so that's where I get this part now square of that is so let's say this one square is minus 1 times minus 1 is 1 0 square is 0 1 square is 1 that made it easier so this is what I have now sum of so according to this I need to sum whatever comes out of this and if I go here sum of 1 plus 0 plus 1 is 2 so sum of all the numbers is 2 so I get 2 for the numerator of where denominator for the bottom part is number of elements I have 3 elements so 2 divided by 3 is this particular thing now square root of that so let's open calculator go back here so open the scientific calculator because it has square root now I said 2 divided by 3 is 0 0.66 now what is square root of that 0.816 and if you see that's how we get the standard deviation number so this is the formula that is used and that's how we get standard deviation so these are three different methods which we'll be using quite a lot in our uh, machine learning algorithms or when we set up our code mean medians and standard deviation I just wanted to go over the basics over that just so that you understand how this works and uh, let's move forward to next one the last one that I want to talk about is save and load so if you want to save a particular array you can just say np dot save you have to give a key or tag for it I can call let's say I want to save my n1 array inside my array you can say n1 so it will save it in and later on if you want to load it let's say n load equal to np dot load the name of the array and I have to give an extension py or npy and if I print this n load you'll see I get the array that I saved so you can actually we will be saving some items for later use and then load it in somewhere else so that's how you can save a particular array and load it up later so this is basics of numpy some of the things that we've done uh, look at it try to go through all these different functions understand how it works and if you have questions let me know in comments below